Dr. J here. Um, the third example consists of the Laplace transform of an impulse function, also called the direct delta function. It's one funky function because it's just a single spike that occurs one instant of time. Mathematically, we have this function f of t or del equal to the impulse function or direct delta function equal to 1 when t is equal to 0 and 0 everywhere else when t is not equal to 0. Uh, you can visualize the impulse as a limiting form of a rectangular pulse of unit area. So I'll show you that in the next slide. But some of the examples of an impulse function is uh, that comes close to being modeled with impulse function is lightning, because lightning has lots of energy and occurs in a short amount of time. Uh, An ideal impulse we'll see has infinite high amplitude that corresponds to high energy and it's infinitely thin in time. So, uh, for example, as you drive through um, a lightning storm, you may hear popping sound if you're tuned into some radio weather station. And this noise occurs when the energy of the lightning interferes with the signal coming from the radio weather station. Another example of a real world impulse function is a bomb. A powerful bomb has lots of energy and occurring in a short amount of time. Similarly, fireworks, including cherry bombs, producing loud noises. That's audio energy that occurs as a series of popping sounds, having short durations. Now let me show you that the impulse can be visualized as a limiting form of a rectangular pulse of unit area. Okay. So what we have is a impulse of unit area and this impulse only occurs at t equal to zero and nowhere else. So we just have one single spike occurring at a time t equals zero. We can also delay the impulse which we'll see uh, in your signals and systems class where you can delay impulses in uh, for almost any input as as any input can be modeled as uh, weighted time shifted impulses. But here, this impulse is delayed by tau, and it only occurs at tau and nowhere else. Now, to show you the limiting form of the rectangular pulse of a unit area, you can decrease the duration duration of the pulse right here, uh, where its amplitude increases so that the area remains constant. So here, this the one with the smallest amplitude but the widest as it gets uh, for this rectangle and as it as the rectangle gets thinner the height increases such that the area is equal to one and then when it gets uh, down to even uh, more narrower um, rectangular pulse it gets higher and it eventually approaches to the point where it becomes an impulse where it becomes infinitely thin and infinitely high to such that the area of equal one. So the limiting form of a rectangular pulse is the impulse function. Now what we want to show is that the Laplace transform of impulse function is just simply f of s is equal to one. And here's our definition of our Laplace transform. f of t e to the minus st dt and then we'll just simply substitute delta t into our definition and this only occurs at one point and that's when the argument of this impulse function t is equal to zero when this is t is equal to zero e to the s times zero in the exponent here becomes one so the area of the impulse multiplied by this complex exponential is one so, and that's all there is to it. So when it comes to impulse functions, integrating is easy because it only occurs only at one point. You just need to evaluate it at one point and that's your area. Now, something interesting associated with this. Um, when it's very thin in the one domain, it's very wide in the Laplace domain. And this is shown in the next figure. We have an impulse in the time domain and in the Laplace domain, it's uh, very wide here and it's in this domain, the Laplace domain, and very thin in the time domain. Uh, this occurs, uh, property occurs for most signals. 
So anything that's thin in one domain becomes very wide in the frequency domain or the Laplace domain. And then anything that's thin in one domain is very wide in the other domain. And we'll you'll see this in your signals and systems course. So that's it for the impulse function where we see that the Laplace transform of an impulse is just simply a constant where f of s is equal to 1 for a unit impulse of strength 1.